So to finish up um, with the Riemann sums, looking at example number two from our class notes for Riemann sums, um, we did the left sum and we did the right sum. But looking at our function y equals x to the third, let's go ahead and do part C and let's do the midpoint of each subinterval. So again, remember to do the midpoint. We've already constructed our table. So again, remember the width of each rectangle is two. So when I don't want to do a midpoint sum, Riemann sum with three subintervals, again, what we need to do when we're looking at this first rectangle from negative two to zero, I know the width of the rectangle is two. The height is going to come from the midpoint between negative two and zero. So if you know the, the midpoint between negative two and zero is negative one. So what I need to do is I need to find f of negative one to find the height at x equals negative one. So when I plug negative one back into my function, that's going to give me a negative one. So this is going to be negative one plus. Now I need to find the midpoint between the width of my next rectangle, which is zero and two. Again, the width of this rectangle is two. The midpoint between zero and two is going to be at x equals one. So I need to find f of one. Again, when I plug one back into my original function, that gives me a one. So the height I'm going to use for this rectangle is one. Plus, my last and final rectangle, again, notice um, the width is still two, but the midpoint between two and four is three. So I need to find f of three. So f of three then, when I plug three back into my original equation, is going to give me 27. So that's the height I'm going to use for the third rectangle. So when I add all these together, negative two plus two is zero. Two times 27 is going to give me a 54. So there's my midpoint sum with three subintervals. So any questions on that one? If you need help, let me know. D, the last one, trapezoidal. So the trapezoidal with three subintervals. Remember, the trapezoidal is going to come from taking your left sum and your right sum and dividing it by two. Remember, we found your left sum in part A, which was zero. We found your right sum in part B, which was 144. And I'm going to divide by two. So this is going to give me 52. So when we're talking about um, Riemann sums, what we also need to do is look at that over and under approximation piece. Remember, when we were dealing with the left and right Riemann sums, the, um, hang on just a second. I... When we were trying to figure out the over and under approximation, it all came from whether it was increasing or decreasing. When we're talking about the trapezoidal and when we're talking about the midpoint, it's all going to be based on the concavity. So when we're talking about the accuracy of our midpoint and trapezoidal sums, it's going to relate to the function's concavity, whether it's an over or under approximation. So if you have a midpoint sum and the function is concave up, it's going to be an under approximation. And you can kind of see that right here from this diagram. You can see where you're concave up. And when you calculate the area of the rectangle, you can see you've got this white area that's not being accounted for, for the area under the curve. If it's a midpoint sum and it's concave down, it's going to be an over approximation. Again, you can kind of see that right here, how much gray area you have on the outside um, of the function. If it's a trapezoidal sum, if it's a concave up function, then it's going to be an over approximation. And again, if it's concave down, it's going to be an under approximation. So when you're dealing with those two types of midpoint sums, you've got to look at the concavity, whether it's an under or whether it's an over approximation. Your midpoint approximations and your trapezoidal approximations are usually slightly better than the actual um, left and right Riemann sums, but not all the time. It just depends. So last thing we need to talk about, um, again, and we've pretty much been doing this um, when I gave you those two examples that we've already did in class, tabular Riemann sums. So instead of them giving you an equation and you developing your own table yourself in your graph, they may actually already give you the table. So instead, you'll be using um, a table to calculate your tabular Riemann sums. 
Now, the trick is, however, it comes to this midpoint sum. This midpoint sum is a very deceiving word, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but what we're going to have to do is we have to double the width. You cannot make up the values for the height f of x in the table. We can't make up numbers. So, for example, three, find the Riemann sum of the given the table um, with, again, these are going to be equal subintervals. So when you're doing a table, you've got to look to see whether you're dealing with equal subintervals or unequal. And we'll do an example of each for a minute. So we're going to do six subintervals, and we're going to find an approximation for the, remember this integral sign is the area under the curve for, from 1 to 13 for f of x dx. So let's go ahead and do the left sum. Remember, left sum, you end up dropping the height on the right. So remember, with our left sum, we drop that height on the right. Now, when I say equal subintervals, what that means is notice the difference between my x values is constant. Notice the difference between 1 and 3 is 2. The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. The difference between 5 and 7 is 2. 7 and 9 is 2. Again, this is 11. I don't know what happened with the formatting there. That's 2. And then 11 and 13, that's also 2. So the width of all these rectangles is 2. In the next example, these may not be constant. So to find my left Riemann sum, and again, we're dealing with six subintervals, I can actually factor out that two. Remember, you don't have to. Remember, with the left sum, I'm using the height on the left. So it's going to be two times the height on the left of my first rectangle, which is six, plus the height on the left, which is nine, plus the height on the left, which is 10, plus five, plus four, plus two. Remember, we end up dropping this last value on the right because it's a left sum. So when I add and multiply by 2, this is going to give me a 72. So that's my left Riemann sum. With my right Riemann sum, remember, we end up dropping the height on the left. So when I do my right Riemann sum, again, what's going to happen is, again, my widths are all 2, so I can factor out the 2. You don't have to. But I'm going to end up dropping the height on the left. When I look at the first rectangle, I'm going to use the height on the right, so I'm going to use the 9. That's what I mean by dropping this height on the left. I'm not going to take into account this 6 when I'm calculating the area of all these rectangles. So I'm going to start with 9, plus 10, plus 5 plus 4, plus 2, plus 1. So when I add these together and multiply by 2, it's going to give me 62 for my right Riemann sum with 6 other intervals. Now this is where I said the midpoint is going to be deceiving. We have to double the width. In other words, what happens here is if you look at your first rectangle, the height between 1 and 3, the midpoint between 1 and 3 I know is 2. But I do not know what the y value is when x is equal to 2, nor do I have an equation to plug 2 into to figure out what that y value is going to be. So this is what I mean we're going to end up doubling the height. So my first rectangle is going to turn out to have a width of 4. So what's going to have to happen is now, again, so my first rectangle is going to have this midpoint. It's not the actual midpoint numerical value. It's just the value between those two um, intervals on the table. So in other words, that's what I mean when I've got to double the height. I'm doubling the height to the width of 4. So notice the difference between 1 and 5 is now 4. So I'm end up going to only have and do a midpoint sum with three subintervals because the height now of my rectangle is going to be 4. And the height of the rectangle at the value in the table between 1 and 5 is going to come from x equals 3. So that's going to be 9 plus. Now when I take a look at my next rectangle, I'm going to go from 5 to 9. Notice my width is still 4, so I have to use this table value that's between 5 and 9. So that's going to come from x equals 7. So that's going to be the height of 5. And then finally, my last rectangle from 9 to 13. Notice my width is still 4, but I've got to use the height at the x equals 11 because that's the value in the table between 9 and 13. So then I'm going to use a height of 2. So when I say midpoint, it's very deceiving because it's not the actual value, numerical value, that's the midpoint, for example, between 5 and 1. It's just the midpoint in the table of values. It's the second one right there. 
because it's between 1 and 5. Because we can't make up numbers. We can't make up numbers when we're doing these um, tabular Riemann sums. So this is going to give me um, 14, 16 times 64. Remember, my trapezoidal sum was six subintervals. I'm going to take my left sum, my right sum, and I'm going to divide by two. So 72 plus 62 all divided by two, which is going to give me 67. So the table problems, again, the difference between the x values could be constant or they may be different. If they're different, you just have to actually calculate the area of each individual rectangle. In other words, you can't factor out this two. Um, you'd actually have to write out length times width plus length times width plus length times width for each individual rectangle. So be careful when tables where the intervals are not evenly, are not even. So find the Riemann sums given a table of values with unequal subintervals. So what I mean unequal sum intervals, you can see the difference between 0 and 5 is 5. But the difference between 5 and 6 is 1. The difference between 6 and 15 is 9. The difference between 15 and 17 is 2. So you can see then that the width of each rectangle is not going to be the same. So then to find my left sum with four subintervals, I'm just simply going to have to calculate the area of each individual rectangle. Remember, left sum, you drop the height on the right. So looking at my first rectangle, I know the width is going to be 5, but again, I'm using the left height. So I'm going to use the height on the left, which is 4. So the um, area of my first rectangle is going to be 5 times 4. Looking at my next rectangle, notice the width is only 1. Again, I'm using the height on the left, which is negative 6. Then from 6 to 15, notice I'm going the difference, the width of that next rectangle is 9. I'm going to use the height on the left, which is negative 10. And then finally, my last rectangle, notice the difference, uh, the width of the rectangle is 2. The height on the left is 20. Remember, I'm not considering the 5. I end up dropping that height on the right. So 5 times 4 is 20, minus 6 is 14. Uh, my, 14 minus 90 plus 2 times 20 is going to give me a negative 36. My right Riemann sum with four subintervals. Remember, I end up dropping the height on the left. So with my right Riemann sum, I drop the height on the left. So again, looking at my first rectangle, we've always talked about how the width is 5, but the height on the right is going to be negative 6. Plus my next rectangle, the difference is 1, so the width of that next rectangle is only 1, but the height on the right is negative 10. My next rectangle, the width is going to be 9, but notice I'm going to use the height on the right, which is 20. And then finally, my last rectangle, the width is 2, but the height on the right is 5. Remember, I did not consider the 4 when I was using my um, area. So when I multiply and add all these together, that's going to give me 150. So any questions? Hopefully, um, the left and right Riemann sum, your guys feel comfortable about that. Midpoint sum, just like we did with the unequal subintervals, you're going to have to end up, again, we can't find, if you look at the midpoint between 0 and 5, I know it's 2.5. I do not have an equation to plug 2.5 into to figure out what the y value is, to figure out that height. So I've got to move one interval over, and I've got to consider these first three columns of my table. And when I say midpoint, I'm considering the column, the second column, the column that's between the first and the third. So if you look at the difference between 0 and 6, the width of my first rectangle is going to be 6. And the height in the middle is going to be negative 6. My last rectangle, because I'm only going to have two, rec two, um, two rectangles here, I've got to use the next three columns. So notice the difference between 6 and 17 is 11. So the width of that next rectangle is 11. And again, 
the height in the middle between 6 and 17 is going to be right here at x equals 15, so the height's going to be 20. So 6 times negative 6 plus 11 times 20 is going to give me 184. The trapezoidal sum with four subintervals, remember I take my left sum, I take my right sum, and I'm going to divide by 2. So I'm going to take negative 36 plus 150, and I'm going to divide by 2. So that's going to give me 57. So there are my uh, Riemann sums with using tables.